Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Casket. I'm a UK-based counseling psychologist in independent practice, and at the moment, practicing exclusively remotely. And this video, by popular demand, is to help my fellow practitioners use the platform Zoom to work with their clients sharing resources, questionnaires, videos, and even working with clients using a shared online whiteboard. So here's how you do it. Here's an extremely important first step before you do anything else with respect to screen sharing using Zoom. Clean your desktop. Zoom will present you with a number of different options for screen sharing. One of those options is to share your entire desktop, and there may be some reasons to do that on occasion. You don't want, when you share your screen, to suddenly have things there that you don't want your client to see. That could be data involving other clients, which would violate, of course, data protection law. That could be just something that's personal to you, um, or you could just be revealing that you have a really messy and disorganized computer desktop. Before I started doing remote working, my desktop did not look like this. It had files all over the place, which also slowed down the functioning of my computer probably. So when I shifted to exclusively remote working, I made sure that this was really clean. Before I start a session, I close all of my other windows, my emails, all those other things are gone off my desktop when I start my Zoom session. And anything that I might need for my client sessions is tidied up and it's over here in the top right hand corner under client resources. So close everything that you don't need down, especially things that have personal data on them and have your client resources ready on your desktop in a place where you can find them. You don't always know in advance which resources you are going to want or need in a session with a particular client. It might emerge organically. However, there are lots of situations that you can anticipate this. For example, if you consistently use the GAD or the PHQ questionnaires to assess how a client is doing. Before a session with a client in which you can anticipate that you might be using particular resources, make sure to have those resources ready and open on your desktop. It's going to save you time when you're in your session with your clients. I'm going up here to client resources and I have mine organized in guides, measures, slides, values, and videos folder. And I've got a couple of things here, including who do I want to be in COVID-19, a diagram that I really like that I'll show you at the end or as one of my examples for sharing. And so let's say that at the beginning of each session, I administer the um, cognitive fusion questionnaire to my client, which is a measure that's commonly used in acceptance and commitment therapy. I'm going to want to have the CFQ open and ready on my desktop in case um, uh, so that my client, when I get to screen sharing it, it's going to be right there to see it. And I think I'm also going to do this nice little COVID-19, who do I want to be? I'm going to open that one up too, because I think that maybe I might be sharing that with some clients today. Now I'm going to close this back down into client resources. And the next step is to get ready for my session. Okay, I'm now in my Zoom session, and I don't have a client online with me at the moment, but I'm still going to be able to demonstrate what, how to do the screen sharing that you're going to need to do with a client. There are three different places where you can start sharing. One is down here at the bottom that says share screen, so that can be double clicked. One is at the top under meeting, and you go here and it says start share, but if you read prefer, and it's probably easier and slicker to learn what the keyboard commands are so you're not doing all of this kind of stuff when you're on with your client and thinking, oh, where was that? It's shift command S on a Mac. What it is on a PC, I can't speak to that. I don't know. But start share. Okay, so when you click start share, you're going to be given options of what to share. So this is what, where it comes in, what you've planned to share with the client. Start share. So you can just share files from Google Drive, from OneDrive, from Dropbox. But if you go into Google Drive or other places, there's always the chance that the client's gonna see data that you don't want them to see. Um, you can share a portion of the screen, just computer sound, content from somewhere else, but most of the time you're gonna be here in basic. 
As you can see, the two things that I pulled up before, um, the COVID-19 who do I want to be diagram and the cognitive fusion questionnaire um, are both there uh, available for me uh, to, to share. So I'm gonna choose, first of all, to see how the client is doing with cognitive fusion. I'm gonna select this and I'm going to hit share. Now, now the client is going to be seeing the CFQ. That's what they're going to be seeing on their screen. Um, and so you're going to be able to scroll down through the CFQ with the client and they can either annotate, there's an annotate button here, and they can press on that and they can, for example, they can put a star stamp or a heart stamp or a tick stamp on one of those things and you can scroll down through and say, okay, tick this for me, tick this for me. Where would you put this? Where would you put this? Now you may be recording that on your own copy of the CFQ for the client that day or just writing in your notebook or whatever, uh, but there's a variety of things that they can use. They can even circle it here. They could put text. They can draw. There's a little thing there so that they can do this here. Uh, you, and so, yeah, so that's one of the things that you can, uh, that's what you, one of the things you can do. So if their client were on here, I would um, be able to give them remote access to um, annotate the, the screen. Okay. Now um, I'm going to instead uh, start some, a, a new share and I'm going to share COVID-19. Who do I want to be? So you notice that I just went up there and put new share. I didn't have to do stop share. I did new share. I can also pause it or do a number of other things. So now I'm going to share the preview of COVID-19. Who do I want to be? And I'm going to share that with my client. So now it's going to be this that the clients are, the clients are seeing, this diagram here. And that should be fully filling their screen. When I'm ready to stop sharing, I click stop share. And as you'll see, I come back full screen and we're back in the session. There's something that comes up in session that makes you want to share something in particular. So let's say that I'm talking with a client about their struggles with their cognitions and their feelings. And I might say, oh, this is reminding me of the struggle switch. Do you remember when we talked about that? And they might say, oh, the struggle switch, how did that, whatever. And maybe I'll take that you know, through with them myself. Or maybe I decide, oh, we'll go through the video from Russ Harris about the struggle switch again. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press escape on my computer so that my client doesn't see this or my desktop yet, but I'm going to get it ready. I hadn't planned it, but I'm going to go to it. Luckily, I've got it tidied up very neatly in my client resources thing. So I'm going to try to keep it as natural as possible while I'm talking to the client while I go to my videos folder. Uh, and there is the struggle switch right there. So I'm going to pull that up. I'm not going to start it yet. Close this down. All right, so now that's up and ready to go on my desktop. So I'm going to go back on here. I'm going to share my screen. And this time you'll see there is the struggle switch ready to go on QuickTime Player. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to optimize my screen share for uh, my video clip, for the best full screen video clip viewing experience. So I'm going to tick that, which also ticks share computer sounds. And then I'm going to click this because that is what I am sharing. And I'm going to put share. And now come down here and play. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing. That's what the client's seeing. We're going to watch this few minute video together and then we're going to press stop share and we're going to get back to the session. It's as easy as that. The online whiteboard, which is a brilliant feature of Zoom that not a lot of people realize is there. So I'm going to again share my screen. This time I'm going to do command shift S. See, there you go. You didn't see the mouse going around all like that. Um, so as you'll see here, right next to desktop one, you'll see whiteboard. Simply click on, I, can, I don't need to optimize the screen share for the video clip. Um, so I'm going to tick whiteboard here and press share. And voila, look what comes up here. It is the online whiteboard with all of these controls right here. There's text. client can also put text, we can draw, we can put stamps, we can spotlight something, 
can erase things. Uh, we can format different things, do things in different colors and lines, undo things, redo things, uh, clear it completely to start all over again, and then we can save it because maybe you want to save it and maybe this is something that you want to um, uh, do with your clients later um, uh, or you want something that you want them to remember. So if we've done the act matrix, for example, um, and uh, here's the matrix, and I'm gonna do this for the matrix. I'm gonna say, okay, so what are we gonna to put today? Uh, what thoughts or you know, feelings are kind of coming up that are getting in the way? And we're gonna put it and type it into the different quadrants. Um, and then we can save it and send it to the client later for their reference. So Online Whiteboard has unlimited possibilities. I have a trackpad and a stylus. You can also just sort of do things with your finger on the, uh, on your, on your, uh, on your trackpad. Um, but yes, whatever equipment you've got, it's possible to do it with very simple equipment, especially if you just use text and straight lines. Uh, but if drawing or sort of doing a lot of pictures and stuff, it's probably better to get a stylus to help you to help you do that. That's the online whiteboard. Resources that have been set up by other people that you can access or that you can make yourself. For example, if you want to make an animated PowerPoint to illustrate something and export that PowerPoint slide as a video, you can learn how to do that by tutorials on YouTube, etc. But I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of other folks' resources that I might use and screen share in Zoom in a session with a client. So I'm going to navigate over to client resources here and find slides. Um, and here we have some slides associated with the ACT matrix, uh, which were available and downloadable from uh, onto Box, which is a file storage thing. Uh, so here's some matrix cards. So in, in, in session with clients, I often use cards, values cards, matrix cards like this. So I might share these in a client within a virtual session. Um, so here's some instructions for using the cards, uh, but uh, here we go, some illustrations, my comfort zone, my self-care zone, where the magic happens. Um, so lovely little points here that I can work with in session with my client. Uh, maybe we're working on identifying or clarifying a certain thing and the matrix cards are going to be useful. So we might do this exercise. And once we've clarified some things and thought about some of these aspects, maybe I will screen share with them another matrix associated exercise. Maybe we'll do something together. In this case, I would have this ready and open on my desktop. Um, the online matrix slides that present the matrix, these are animated. Um, so, it's all about a way in towards the matrix, uh, towards values, uh, and then running away uh, when you're uh, afraid. Towards, away, here we go. Who's important, other important things, stuff that shows up. These are behaviors that are observable outside the skin. Away moves there board moves there. So this would be me talking through the ACT matrix with the client, reviewing the model with them. Uh, and then we would be working together on filling in things in these four quadrants. And again, sharing the screen with the client enables both of us to annotate things. We could, I'm not in Zoom at the minute, so I can't show you, but I could do text in one of these quadrants. I could draw it freehand or write freehand or text, and so could the client. So we can work on this together in a virtual session, just like we'd be able to do if we had printouts and a piece of paper in the room. In fact, we might actually be able to do it better. This is one area where virtual working and screen sharing actually allows you to do something more seamlessly than you might be able to do it in a face-to-face -face physical psychotherapy session. So there we have it, getting familiar with screen sharing and having your desktop organized and ready enables you to do all the things that you can do with clients in face-to-face -face physical sessions 
and in some case, even enables you to do them that much better. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some inspiration to bring your online virtual remote psychotherapy practice bang up to date and to make you feel even more effective in the work that you're doing during COVID-19 and remote working that you might do at any other time. Again, I'm Elaine Casket. Feel free to get in touch with me at contact at DrElaineCasket.com. I'd love to hear from you. The Cognitive Fusion Questionnaire was de developed by David Galanders and colleagues and is available on this website here. The Matrix Cards were developed in 2018 by Benjamin Schoendorf. You can visit his website at contextsci.com. Same for the Matrix Slideshow. And the Struggle Switch video, amongst many other helpful videos from Russ Harris, are viewable on YouTube.